In short, your rights were violated. Hard administration certainly felt that you all were, were uh, just to be uh, where you were and to be doing what you were doing, but uh, it seemed to be a miscommunication with the security staff. It was an impressive um, and sort of foolish uh, error in terms of uh, a clear impediment to your First Amendment rights. What started as a school project quickly turned into a legal issue. We started this documentary on why more students should ride the bus, but when police were called, we found a more pressing issue. As students, we felt unprepared for our First Amendment rights. Here's the events that led up to TPD being called. Our First Amendment rights were violated by private security officers contracted by Hart, not once, but three times. They claimed the Marion Transit Center was a private bus station, and we needed permission before filming. You were okay from Hart to be doing this yet? From Hart? From Hart. You have to go safety and security, you have to have permission. We were left puzzled as to how Hart can claim this public bus station as private property. On the first encounter, our footage was deleted before leaving. We were told to get permission from Hart first. When Hart's director of safety and security was contacted, he apologized for the misunderstanding and said the issue would be addressed. But it was not. Security officers still claimed the bus station was private property and that we needed written permission to film. Yeah, this is private property and there are actually are signs also. Yeah. Uh, they said you can film across the street. Mm -hmm. So until you get something else, maybe in writing, you're just going to have to film across the street. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for taking up your time. Right. Thank you. I got it. We left the station and informed our professor of what had just happened. From there, we began our journey of knowing our First Amendment rights. First thought, I kind of put my put myself in the position of the students and I was like, well, I don't really know how I would have handled the situation. And I was honestly really scared for the students because I was like, oh, like, maybe they aren't supposed to be there. Maybe they are really in the wrong. It was upsetting to me because here we are trying to do a nice story on the public transit. We reached out to Hart's public information officer, Sandra Morrison, to clarify some of our concerns. This was her response. In the email, Ms. Morrison says, quote, the Marion Transit Center is a public property with the original intent of use for public transit, which means that our security company, Allied Barton, and our transit supervisor can ask someone at the Marion Transit Center and University Area Transit Center what they're doing if they notice someone or a group lingering for a long period of time. Though we were just collecting B-roll footage of buses and patrons, we made sure not to be in the way. Even while having a tripod with us, we were still able to move it and put it away if necessary. One of the main reasons security was able to stop us from filming was because of a no unsolicited photography sign located at the bus station. When we asked Ms. Morrison about the legality of the sign, she says that the sign had been up for some time now as the Marion Transit Center has been there for 17 years, so most likely the sign has been up since then. I don't think there's any Florida statute that permits that. Um, to me, it would be no different from going outside our building right now and putting a big stake in the ground with a sign on it that says no one can take photographs out here. That's a public sidewalk. You can walk down the public sidewalk and do whatever you do on any other public sidewalk. Although we never received a formal explanation from Hart, when we returned to the transit center, the sign was taken down. Whether it was because of our actions or a letter sent by the ACLU after we informed them of the situation, the sign was replaced with a new one that mentions nothing about photography. The inside of government buildings are under slightly different rules. There are a lot of taxpayer owned buildings. Let's say a hospital might be owned, might be a public hospital owned by the taxpayer. You can't barge into a hospital and start filming and walk into someone's hospital room. That's an, an invasion of privacy. There are ways to getting the shots you need, even if the property, like hospitals, are private. Merely standing anywhere on public sidewalk grants you the right to record private businesses like in downtown or the mall. But public sidewalks are though are one of many places where you always have the right to take pictures. The same rules apply for some government facilities like military bases and other public safety agencies. But make sure to keep your distances as there are some restrictions. Take the airport for example. 
Although it is public property, there are laws put in place by Homeland Security that prohibit the filming of TSA. You must get permission first for access beyond security. But how does filming work on a private campus? We are happy for people to come and look at it and take pictures of it. And, um, but as long as they're not obstructing the normal operations of campus. Although it seems that those students can freely film around campus, some professors and students have claimed quite the opposite. I've actually had problems with students filming on campus. Um, and so that's another issue that we have to confront. One of my earlier photographers was told to leave the premises of one of the Sodexo locations. I think it was um, Morsani. So I tell my students if they're going to film on campus, they're okay because they have the right to film on campus. And I always just tell them if they're worried about it, just ask people or let them know that they're going to be filmed. Students should contact someone at the university, their campus safety or myself and just to, um, just to make sure it's okay. And if they want to um, film in a certain location, say they want to film in the College of Business building, um, to contact that location just to make sure it's, it's okay. But not everywhere on campus you need permission to film. Though UT is a private university, there are some exceptions. The sidewalks along Kennedy, Cass, and uh, North Boulevard would be city property. So um, that is not part of UT property. People can go out on those sidewalks and do whatever they want to do. Knowing your rights is vital prior to filming. That's why experts are brought to campus to educate the students before they go out on the field. Some would even say filming in public is a basic human right. It's a type of information uh, uh, allowing the expression of rights is important to democracy. It's a key cornerstone of our democracy. That's why before leaving your location to film, it's important to look up whether you're going to a public or private property. What precedent is there for the government to be able to restrict the non-disruptive act of photojournalism when your feet are planted on a place where you have a legal right to plant it? As students, it's our duty to stay informed. We must look up the laws of our state to be prepared for any possibility. We must not be afraid to stand up for ourselves, and most importantly, we must know our rights.